What's up, everybody? It's Joe LaPuma. You are listening. You are watching the Complex Sneakers podcast. As always, I'm with my guys. To my left, Mr. Matt Welty. We're live at ComplexCon, but it's not live right now. Okay. A little peek behind the curtain. <laughs> to my far left, Mr. Brendan Dunn, full of energy. He yawned five times right before we came on camera, but how are we feeling? I, I love all this behind-the-scenes people are getting. I'm feeling good. How, how are y'all feeling? Feeling good. I got eight. I got like six hours of sleep last I've been, night. Last night, I went to bed at 4.30, and I don't mean like I went to sleep, but I was literally in bed at 4.30 watching the Oregon Ducks game because I had a long day of shaking people's hands, of kissing course. babies, things like that. Which they won. They won. Uh-huh. Go Ducks. I got out of bed at around 6 o'clock at halftime to go get a burrito, and then I came right back to bed. Nice. I'm living on hotel lobby pizza and chicken tenders. <laughs> Two nights in a row I had that. Are you going to treat yourself with the CPK across the street after this? Well, maybe. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe you're, because <laughs> you're gonna also, let us go to also they're, they're also watching because they heard what you said. <laughs> and After the CPK slander last week, now you're co-signing it? I mean, is, is it a step up from the lobby pizza? Yes, but I'm not throwing anyone under the bus. I enjoy the lobby pizza. <laughs> I Does Justin the... Bolas know you ate lobby pizza? No, and Justin Bolas snuck on. Yeah, stormed the stage. Snuck onto set somehow. Get him to the lagoon and keep him there. Dude, the first yeah. we feast the, lagoon, yeah. keep him there. The humbling that happened when he stepped on stage, he brought out a piece of paper. I and know. Brendan goes, is this an approved list of places that we could eat? <laughs> Joe LaPuma goes, <laughs> How about I start judging your sneakers? You stop judging my food. Listen, I'm, th- listen, I'm, I'm sticking up for us. Thank you, Joe. You up, you okay? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I got the energy that you need. Don't worry about my energy, man. Okay. Should, I'm, I'm should, we, should we give a disclaimer? So this is, this episode's coming out in what two weeks? Two weeks. But two weeks. No, no, no. This episode's coming out this week. Okay. Oh, it's coming out this week. Yeah. Okay. Well. Sorry. Good thing you can edit this. <laughs> you, you worried about my energy? <laughs> I, I, yeah. I have the energy. I have the facts straight. This episode is coming out this week. Yes. But we are recording it live at ComplexCon, as Welty alluded to earlier. We're here at ComplexCon. Welty, are all your fits in order? Because there were there were two weeks where you had mentioned on this this podcast how you were planning your fits out. And then a couple days before we came to ComplexCon, you were G-chatting me because you said you were laying out all your outfits. And I was thinking, wow. the outfits that you bring to ComplexCon better be incredible because I could tell there's there's been a lot of planning. I, dude, of I just get I just get anxiety, man. You know? Okay. I, I get, and are you happy with what you arrived yes, at? Yes, I get anxiety of, like, you're going to forget something. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to, like, pack the shoes and then pack a shirt that doesn't – that forget the shirt that's supposed to go with it. Yeah, you but know, if, that hap- like a- if that happened, we take you right down to H&M and the Nike factory store. It's, <laughs> right across it's, the street it's here. From the actually, it happened, it happened when you are at ComplexCon where I forgot to pack all the shirts that I had put out and I came to ComplexCon. I had zero shirts. Well, okay. And I had to Were take. Were you shirtless? I was shirtless. Yeah, walking around shirtless. I had to take a uh, Uber about, I don't know, an hour to the closest mall. Listen, I wouldn't be surprised if you were walking around shirtless this year because the amount of love you've been getting on your fitness transformation. Well, listen, to, to be honest. <laughs> and he's been in the gym. He's been in the gym. In the I was too. I was up getting a coffee very early, and I see him. About 6.30, he, yeah. Yeah, 6.30, head right into the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um Hey, you got to stay consistent, right? I haven't hit yes. the gym at all this weekend, but I've been looking at the steps, and the steps are – we're trading off the, the amount of steps that I'm taking. Okay. You, what else so have you been, you been walking at? the floor, Joe? Yeah, walked the floor a few times. Went to the First We Feast Lagoon. So sunny out there. At the, I went at, like, 3 o'clock. I saw you guys. The sun was, like – I felt like Khaled when he looks up in the sun. <laughs> the sun at the First We Feast Lagoon. It was like 15 degrees hotter than is, is it that actually you, was. Is that because your star was shining so bright when you walk into the First We Feast Lagoon and you're getting get, stopped left and right? Yeah. It was really good to see uh, a lot of people and I think it was a good day one. Tonight, the ASAP Rocky concert. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to that. You um, met your number one fan at the Complex Hotel Lobby? Yes. I'm. I'm who, yes. Can you explain this to people who don't know? Because yeah. I, I barely know what you're talking about. A young fan had a wedding at the hotel. <laughs> a young fan had a wedding at the hotel we were staying How at. How young? Uh, 12 years old, I think. <laughs> 12 years old. <laughs> that kid was not 12. <laughs> Listen, yes, he, <laughs> he was 12? Actually, I don't know. He looked like he was about know. like 9 or 10 years old. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, his suit, he had, I think he had a tailored Tom Ford suit on, okay? <laughs> he was dressed to the nines. He had a wedding in the in the hotel dressed lobby. Dressed to the nines, which is fitting because he was 9 years old. <laughs> Go on. And, yeah, you guys met, did, you met him too. Well, can we can we talk about the, the awkward uh, in, interaction or like standoff you guys had? What? What? 
that he took like a picture with you and you couldn't figure out how oh, well, the proper God. way to send it to okay. him? Yes, yes. He, I we, thought you were talking about that. No. No. Um, <laughs> we didn't know how to send it to him. Yeah. I asked for like his his Instagram, too young to be on Instagram. He tried to get me, he tried to, he said that his Twitter was in the description of his YouTube. So now I'm bouncing. <laughs> Did you ever see Dennis Rodman in The Last Dance when he takes he's Mom, talking about the rebounds? Way, and yeah. It, yeah, so now I'm bouncing platform to platform yeah. trying to get this picture to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I go on his, he was like, this is my YouTube. And I think it was like the first video was like trolling Discord, which I was like, <laughs> okay. So then finally, finally, I had Joe didn't feel comfortable emailing this kid. He goes, "You might get my email and like publicize it." I'm like, "I'm pretty sure you could just Google Joe Lapuma email and it would come up." But Donnie Kwok emailed him the photo, <laughs> and I heard back from Donnie today that the kid emailed him back. So <laughs> did he submit a resume? <laughs> well, well, the best part he goes, he goes to he goes to Joe. He goes, "You don't have Discord, do you?" Yeah, <laughs> he was literally getting me trying to get me to platform hop. Yeah, so. Yeah, did he didn't collect your email for a newsletter or something? No, like that. no. I heard I heard at one point too. I, he was just hanging out in the lobby and he went and like uh, brought Christian Bassler, the president of Complex, a whole pizza and just like laid it down in front of what? him. What? <laughs> what? That's what I had heard. <laughs> okay, so oh, this, listen, young entrepreneur, he's gonna be our but boss in a matter he, of months. He wasn't here for okay. He wasn't here for Complex. Con, Do you think he works when, at BuzzFeed? When <laughs> when he gets older, it's possible. Listen, when he gets older. When he gets older, if Complex Con is still around, we have to give him the VIP treatment. It's only right. That energy. How are we going to get that? Joe, we don't even have the VIP treatment. How are we going to extend that to somebody else? Now you, okay, you're getting, spi you're getting spicy. <laughs> Just a little bit spicy. Come you're on. You're getting spicy. Oh, um, man. Things at Complex Con we should probably talk about. Uh, our good friend, co host mm -hmm. on Full yes. Size Run, mm -hmm. Trinidad yes. James, three booths. Not one, not two, but three. One better than another. Yeah. Uh, he had the Saucony uh, for his homework uh, collaboration on the Jazz 81. Mm -hmm. I mean, you folks probably see me and Brendan wore them yeah. on full size run on the season finale. Season 10. Season 10 with you Fabulous. Know who didn't wear them. Who? Fabulous. Fabulous. Oh, yeah. Fabulous got but Fab pair. ended up getting a pair and posted nice. on IG. Fab nice. Um, so he sold out of the collaboration. Congrats to him yeah. on the red pair. And and how much do you think that had to do with us wearing them publicly? A lot. Do or, you think we contributed to it? Yeah, yeah. and when we walked up, when we got the, he had this big bag. The big bag. The big yeah, bag was that. genius. Love where that. he told us that it was actually, so opening ceremony, used to have a big bag like mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. and he wanted it made to the exact measurements of that bag. That's awesome. Congrats but we walked, we walked the floor with that bag, and how many people came to us? Yeah, immediately. Yeah, and yeah. we're like, where do I get that thing? They didn't even know there was like a sneaker collaboration. They didn't even know we were famous sneaker podcasters. Yeah, we I was going to say. They just in the bag hanging yeah. off our shoulder. <laughs> he sold out there. He had the dad socks yeah. across there where if you hit a putt yeah. on a green, you got a free pair of dad socks. That's awesome. Um, and, and then, then he had all gold everything. All gold everything. Some really good boots. Uh, Kerwin's Kingdom. The Crazy. Crazy. was amazing. He had the Simpsons arcade game in awesome. there. Awesome. I know you were fanning out, I'm Come sure. On. Come he on, has yeah. a collaboration with 7-Eleven coming up, and they had a shelf where you just got free food and snacks, which yeah. is always a plus. Yeah, you can't be mad yeah, at Yeah, the energy was good day one. This is there's, day there's one. There's so many boosts. I feel like I just I feel compelled to just talk for an hour about all the friends that we see. You know, Corey, From Circulate, Circulate Mosh. Yeah, yep. the Turnstile boosts. Just, just so many Brownstone. good people. Abdul is in the building. Yeah, Abdul. <laughs> Abdul. Abdul's famous, man. There was there was one point we were in Kerwin's booth and this Kerwin's Kingdom. Kerwin's Kingdom, and there was like a stage there because the Jabberwockies had performed on the stage earlier, which is crazy. And um, there was a photog who came up to us, and me and Brendan were like, we're going around taking photos, you know, kissing babies with everyone. Yeah, this, this one guy comes up to us, and he's like. We thought he wanted to take a photo with the three of us. He's like, Makes nah, sense. he's I'm from the DMV. I want to take a photo of Abdul. Yeah, see, the humbling comes swift and fast sometimes. <sighs> and he goes, he, yeah. we're, it, I think we had said something, or Brendan, you had, I don't know who said something, but we were like, hey, do you want us to stand on stage with you while you take the photo? And the guy's like, no. Nah, <laughs> like, I love that. What a, what a I blow love to that. the ego. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> Joe, did you get a chance to stop by Joe Freshko's booth? I actually saw the talk he had with uh, Joe from New oh, Balance. Did you? Because I, I missed you guys. Yeah, I missed you guys there. But it seemed like. Did, a you, did you hear that wealthy got a little shout out? I heard about you that. Got a call. Are you, or you said a, I got a call out. A call out. More, more of a call out. Which I guess, hey, goes down in the the annals of a uh, sneaker history, right? Yeah, yeah. That will be your your major mark. And I'm sure you will bring it up 
very well, consistently. They, they were talking <laughs> about they were Go talking ahead. about the nine nine two. Yes. Right, and I had said I'm actually on the podcast, right? Okay. Or, or I think the it was Joe Fresh Goods. Or it was either full size run or the podcast. I think I did both. And I had just mentioned, you know, I was like, oh, there was like some things that felt like rushed on the shoe mm -hmm. or whatever. And then they actually went through the process of creating the shoe, and they're like, yeah, it was rushed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we couldn't do all the 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 materials that we wanted to because we had to make a shoe in like five months. So we just like yeah. brought things from the program in it. But they're like, yeah, as wealthy famously called out on his show that we rushed the shoe. I was like, oh. Important that you get your credit. Yeah. The rotation, how are we feeling about the rotation? I only brought one pair of shoes. I res really respect that. Thank you, Joe. You know what? It's it, The main thing is just making sure you have a pair of shoes that nobody else has, and I don't think anybody else ha has worn these out there. Are you going to be the Spider-Man if you happen to run into one person with a friend? Of <laughs> that happened yeah, to for me sure. yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else had the, the John New Balances yeah. on? Yeah. Were you upset? No. I actually got asked about that. I never get upset when people are wearing the same sneakers. It's like when you used to drive the Jeep and you're driving and you just, that, you know. The guy. The <laughs> guy <laughs> the friendly. The guy, yeah. the There's the a Curb Your Enthusiasm enough. episode about that, I think. <laughs> the guy who took the photo of you is the guy, Wahid Sweat, I believe. Mm -hmm. So funny story is, is that I think it was 2010, so forever ago. Mm -hmm. I was at Rock the Bells in uh Boston or Massachusetts and Rock the Bells, you know, had all the hip hop legends mm -hmm. performing or whatever. And they had a smaller stage where it was more like up and coming acts. So it's like 2010. Where are we and going with this? Anyways, so I think it was like the cool it was, cool kids. It might have been the cool kids or it might have been like Tyga or someone like Lime and the Coconut really? okay. Arrow. And I think Travi McCoy like had come out on stage. But there's one guy standing behind the stage, bald head in the craziest sunglasses I've ever seen in my life. And me and my friend the whole time were like, who the hell is that guy? You know, mm -hmm. it just looks like the cool guy standing behind the stage the whole time. Mm -hmm. but, it was the guy, but it was the guy who took the photo with you. Oh, wow. So it was my whole life, my whole life comes to this talk, weird thing. There's talk a about a, a real, listen, a real full circle moment that like we well, got. We're just trying to figure, <laughs> we got him. <laughs> you were trying to thread the needle on that story? Yeah. Yeah, oh, we no, tried to wow. figure out who this guy was standing behind the you stage know, at a 2010 <laughs> Mike. Uh, uh, yeah. some, sometimes I think it was like maybe Mickey Fax was on yeah, stage. Sure, sometimes sure. these weekends very sentimental. I'm gonna see Rocky at the concert and think of like all oh, the cover stories mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. But that story that you just told really rivals <laughs> anything. Rock the hey, bells. Man. Rock the bells. You know who would really enjoy Rock the bells? Who do you think Rock the bells? Dave Matthews. Yeah, super producer Dave, Dave Matthews. Matthews. They could tell. He'll front row. Yeah. In some Tim he's like the guy. He's like, I don't have all the time. He's like, the roots are on at this time. I got most F, and then he's like <laughs> finishing up with Nas. He's like, I, I don't know. My body's ready. The rock is ready. So yeah, we do appreciate this. Should we get to the question? Yeah, yep. sure. All right, eBay question of the week comes from Matthew in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, that's where we are right now. Yeah, it's not why we picked him. No, it's a good question that we've talked about a lot in the Slack. And Matthew asks, how do we feel about the neo vintage? movement right all these shoes that come out that are pre-distressed whether mm -hmm. by a customizer or whether by the brand itself and, and before we get to our answer yeah, i, I do want to give the psa oh yeah pull, pull the shoes out what, what shoes are we giving this uh lucky well, long beach resident joe have you spent more time in long beach long island or long beach california in your life <sighs> that's actually a good question close Is no it close? my friend used to live in long beach long island so i would go a couple times I, i've been there once yeah yeah fourth um weekend. mike francis is from long beach <laughs> okay we'll write that down do special you know shoes that i know who mike francis is. okay yeah uh, uh, special shoes, <laughs> as we know, it says Queens, New York, the world's borough. Our guest is from Queens, New York. Our Everything guest is, is also tying together. Yes. Our guest is also Long Beach question in Queens. Our and guest of course, is also friends sweat. with probably <laughs> with this designer, Ame yes. Leondor. Mm -hmm. Shoes that caused a riot. They did. Oh they yeah, they got wow. the riot. They got shut down. Rondon, yeah, yeah, on Mulberry Street, right? Yeah. Pull them out here with the eBay authenticity guarantee tag on there. By the way, this is how you win the sneakers. Every week we will answer a fan submitted question on the podcast. You can submit your question by going to ebay.complex.com. We will pick out a question from there. If we pick out your question to read on the air, we are going to give you a free pair of sneakers courtesy of eBay with the authenticity guarantee there tag it is. on there. Pair of shoes that I love, pair of shoes that Brendan Dunn doesn't love. I'm not really a fan of that New Balance model. Anyways, these are the Ame Leon Door New Balance 990 V2 ALD on the back. Yeah, as I said, these were released in store, or they, I think they tried, they tried to, drop, to release them in store. them in store, and they actually got shut down by the NYPD. A lot of Fredo espressos getting spilt that day. <laughs> um, a lot of Mountain Tea left on the sidewalk mm -hmm. that day. And I think the interesting thing about this shoe too was this was 
right on the cusp of like when ALD was like, it was bubbling a little bit, mm -hmm. but hadn't really quite taken off into the brand that we know it now. And this is probably one of the earlier moments where it's like, oh, there's something behind it. Yeah, um, this is a and the rest deal. is history. Teddy yep. goes on to yep. hold that big role. Yep. New Balance. Yep. So shout out Teddy for making a great shoe. Yeah. And so, the question. Yeah. How do we feel about these these sneakers that come and they look like they've already been worn a decent amount? I'm, I'll say off top, I'm not a fan of it. Okay. You and remember, you remember like 10 years ago when Nike was doing all those vintage packs where you would get yes. a pair of Air Max 90 infrareds? Or I actually have one of the Nike Dunk Highs with the pre-yellowed sole. And it was, it was the kind of thing where I would still buy it, but I wasn't interested in it. And a lot of people online at the time were way more interested in just having a straight retro, a clean shoe, rather than like a pissy yellow mid well, right think, out of the box. I think they, like back then, like maybe 2010, 2011, they... Didn't they drop the Air Jordan KO with like a vintage? Yeah, AJ KO. Yeah, and, and stuff with like the that. With vintage soul. Just, you're just getting some acetone and trying to wipe it off yeah. after you buy the shoe. Do you guys also remember earlier than that, like the Zoom waffles they were doing distress? Remember yeah. that whole pack? Yeah, yeah. And I feel like, I remember we put those in the magazine, but I kind of feel like those may have sat. Jun like it, it didn't really catch on. Junior Watanabe yes. was actually the first to yes. do that for Nike. Yeah. And I think that with, with the question to answer it, I'm like in the middle because I like wearing my shoes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes a while. Like I look at the G Dragons for the G Dragon Air Force One to really like. Well, that I mean, that's actually your shoe getting distressed. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like it's cheating a little bit? What do you mean? The, like vin, like vintaging the, up the, a Jordan like, One? Like it's, yeah. Like, I mean, if there's some things that like it's obviously it's not actually vintage per se, right? But if you actually like try to make it look like you have 85 Jordan 1s and you're like, oh, you know what? It's just- Pulling the wool over people's eyes. Yeah, and like some people might be like, oh, you know what? Like I just thought it was cool because I looked like it, but people don't want to admit it, but there are some people who are probably trying to pass to like the layman's viewpoint so that they have vintage, I never thought of it like that. That they have vintage 85 ones. I never thought of it like that. Let me ask you, so are you guys against it from the idea or if it looks good, you would, you would maybe like can you see yourself ever no, like wavering? No, on principle, I'm against it because if there's wear on the shoe, I want to have added that wear to the shoe. So, but not even just pulling the wool over someone's eyes. It, obviously, it's a real Jordan shoe. If you have a real Jordan yeah. one, right, bread, but you give it the vintage treatment, people are like, oh, I can't afford 85 right, ones. Right. But is that the same as just wearing a fake Rolex? Oh, no. What? <laughs> what? Well, no, it's I like, it's like so. no, because no. it's the idea it's that like so. you're like, Trying to get people to believe that you have that product, you can't. Uh, uh, you're not at the point level where you can attain it yet. The mm. one thing I would say is that as good as they have become in like doing the vintage on the Jordan ones, nothing beats like the real, like vin nothing like even the look. Yeah. Like it's just as close as they could get it. I think that just the 94s or the 85s, just you like have some the pairs shape of 85 and. Ones? I do. I have black and red 85s. I got from How worn are they? curated van. Uh, they're not that. They're not that worn. What kind of bag did you drop on those? No, that. <laughs> what did Premium Pete tell you? Don't, don't be. <laughs> what did he tell you? An don't episode count ago? other people's money. Yes. I'll tell you though. There's a. There's a. There's a point where those vintage Jordans, specifically 1985 Jordan ones, stop looking good with all the wear. Because I have a pair yeah. of 1985 and. The the traction on the bottom is so gone you can almost slip around like with a hender scheme sole, huh? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> These so were like, in really good condition, and I got them because it was right after we did the Yachty closet, and mm -hmm. he was like curated van got me all these eighty fives. Yeah. So I like talked to him, and he's was like, was that before prices on them blew up? Mm. We count his money now. I got a good I think that they blew up honestly. Last dance. That's when. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was yeah. this was after. I, th but I thought you were gonna say. Uh, actually, I thought they blew up because I got a pair. I don't. I don't. <laughs> no, I don't talk like that. I'm kidding. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> the influence. All right. So listen, Matthew, Long Beach, hometown. Maybe. Do we think Matthew's in the house? Today? I hope so. I wish we could just yeah find him out there and just give the shoes to him. Dave Matthews, track him down if he's at the ASAP Rocky concert tonight. We'll stop the concert. Hand deliver them. And we'll give them. We'll we'll give him. Announce the shoes. it over the PA. Yeah. All right. Um. Enough of all that. Let's bring in our guest. Let's do it. Our guest on today's podcast is a Queens native who became a professional BMX rider at the age of 18. That year was also the year he signed with Nike. Since then, he's become one of the most recognizable riders in the sport's history. His one-of-a-kind Go videos, a stunty content series that has allowed him to showcase his skills around the world, have racked up over 60 million views on YouTube alone. And every time he touches a pedal, fans are checking for his footwear. 
Being a Nike athlete earlier in his career yielded multiple collaborations, but in 2018, he got the shot to design his favorite sneaker of all time, an Air Jordan 1. The scuffed up Silla was one of the more notable Jordan releases of that year, and it would lay the foundation for September of this year, where our guest became the first BMX athlete to sign a major deal with the brand. Today, we'll get into his long sneaker history and talk about what he's cooking up next as a Jordan brand athlete. Please welcome to the podcast, our friend, Nigel Sylvester. Yo. How you doing? <laughs> intro was good, man. Thanks, man. How are you, Nigel? How's it going? I'm good, man. I'm good. Thanks for having me today. Yeah. How's it feel to be in Long Beach? Man, I haven't been in Long Beach in years, bro. Yeah. So it, it feels good, man. Coming out to Complex Con is great. Seeing the homies, seeing yeah. the boost and stuff. Seeing like some of my homies who started brands recently and then mm -hmm. to see them here on the floor is incredible, man. And you came, you early flexed on us. I mean, you know, a little something. <laughs> something. Let you know, official Jordan <laughs> brand something, packages something. coming through. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, like they're holding me down, man. They're holding me down did, right did now. Did you feel like your access at the brand like went up a tier when you signed the official contract? Of they're like, hey, now you have access to all these shoes. Man, listen, the packages that came rolling in was like, yeah. thank you very much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, but like, it's it, it's always been love at, at Nike, man. I've been there, as you mentioned, Joe, since I was 18 years old. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, it's 15 years now. So it's always been love the whole time, entire time. So getting the chance now to work on the Jordan brand side, um, it's just as good, man, you know? And some complex history, Nigel, I remember it must have been like maybe, you know, I'm, I'm bad with years, but maybe even like a year or two after I started as an intern, you were like, you had a full page in complex back in the day. Do you remember that? <laughs> that was like my first page in complex, right? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. I, I remember that shit. I think I had like some... Air Max is on, like, it, yeah, flights, and probably like those, some like, G Star jeans back yeah, at that like time. Yeah, purple, like, Windrunner, I yes, think it was. Yeah, yes. I that was my first time shooting with Complex. So, yeah, you have long history with Complex. Yeah, yeah I definitely remember it was like. Love. 2012 or whatever, I was an intern, used to get forwarded like these press packages mm. from like, oh, like Hawaii Mike sent over, like, <laughs> yeah, Hawaii not, Mike. Hawaii like Mike. some like right. sort of Nigel, like editorial that you had shot yeah. on a roof or something like yeah, that. Yeah, man, like, guys like, post we were working, Nigel. man, we were working, bro. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Hawaii Mike, man, that was, that was early on in my career, man, but he showed love as well. Yes, Absolutely. Sir. Came out with the with the Jordan twos on feet. By the way, being being here at Complex Con, do you feel like it's it's tough to move around without getting your shoes stepped on? We were cool yesterday. Okay. We walked around, seeing anybody. Kept their distance. Yeah, you got yeah. a little phalanx around you. You got the, <laughs> <laughs> <that's> the <game. laughs> we got the squad around though, yeah. man. Like we roll deep, man. You I don't know. know. Sometimes when I show up to Complex Con, you know, it, it can get a little hectic depending on which booth you're at. You know? Yeah. D do you disagree? Well, uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. You're not walking the floor like that, Joe. No, I mean I'm not that worried about people. Does it get that hectic that people step on your sneakers though? I mean, sometimes you have to you have to look out. Yeah. All right, your fame <laughs> you, maybe your fame levels up. I know, right? Okay. He got a different type yeah. of audience coming after this, this guy right here. <laughs> Not me. Not me. I think the thing we really need to cut the chase to is how many Kith trips have you guys been on a together? Lot. A <laughs> lot. Man. Those are the best trips, bro. Yeah. And we got one coming up. Those are we the got best one coming trips, up, but man. yeah. Where's, where, is there any uh, tip off? To I'm not. I'm not. We're not. I don't know. I'm not breaking any NDA. That's all we need. <laughs> Ronnie, that's all we need. But uh, I think one's coming up. But yeah, we've been fortunate to travel the world kind of together. For real. Yeah. Which is amazing. Like I would say, like my favorite kid trip was Mystique. Like yes. that was a different experience. What entirely. is it? Mystique. Yes, yeah, Island the in the Caribbean. Oh, I thought it was the X Men character. No. <laughs> <This guy. laughs> what, what made that one special? Just the location, yeah. You know, um, the gear, just like the squad, being yeah. on the beach, playing football in the pool and it was awesome. volleyball and the Joe had the jet ski out. Did the jet ski out there, Joe? No, I didn't. Oh, I okay. didn't. <laughs> they almost made it to a Kith trip. They were on a Zoom with Ronnie in the summer. <laughs> so that's the closest you made it to yeah. Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the, <laughs> it felt a little different, but yeah, we've definitely been fortunate to to kind of like travel the world together and. Um, you know, just even celebrating the 10-year anniversary. That dinner was great and seeing all our friends. That was so fun. Yeah, <laughs> really, really fun. Time. And, like, good. talk about, you know, I know you're a Queens native, and, like, I was looking it up. I worked at Kings Plaza and Roosevelt Field, but right, right. dead center, in the middle of that was was uh, Green Acres Mall. Right. And talk about, like, your early history. You were going there for sneakers. Man, listen, I would... Jump on a uh, dollar van mm -hmm. <laughs> and take that to take to Green Acres, man, and walk around and like go shopping, um, see whatever they had in there. They had a few different sneaker stores, Foot Locker, yeah. Champs, whatever it was. And I actually worked at Express Men okay. in, in Green Acres. That's one of my more my more fond memories of wow. Green Acres Mall. Yeah, that was 
the last real job I had. <laughs> Express Men what year? wasn't what structure. Year was... Didn't structure turn into Express Men? Remember we talked about structure. Uh, structure was an era. That was structure like, was. I don't know what that is. What is structure? Was definitely an era. Oh, structure. <laughs> do, you, do you know you it? Do? Oh. Structure. Okay. Was, thank you. <laughs> you know it. I know. Like, am I supposed I to know this? That one. Structure. This is like 1998. Yeah, we're old. You're probably bumping some LFO <laughs> and wearing some LFO yeah, and wearing some uh, khaki cargo pants. <laughs> but um, what is it? It's a it was a clothing store that I th- think we'll have to fact check it. That like kind of morphed into Express Men, but it was well, that's like, what happened. Okay, in yeah. like the in I guess in the burbs, it was like yeah. you know you could talk to it too. Like it was. Don't front like you weren't going into structure for corduroys. Like, you're you're going to leave on, me. Matt, you're going to leave me out here. <laughs> Support Joe in this one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm I don't. I don't like remember buying anything there, but I do remember the store. Yeah. So. All right, so Express Men and then Green Acres, yeah, and it was like just big box, whatever you could yeah, get, like back then. But exactly, Deion Sanders, Diamond Turtles, man. Yeah, you know what I mean. But even Green Acres, like I would ride up there. Could have this like this one handrail that was on the side of the Toys R Us that was next to Green Acres, so I yeah. would ride up there as well. Um, so yeah, it was a big part of like my childhood. Cause it was right there, you know what I mean. Did you set aside like different shoes to wear while you were biking that you didn't want to mess up? Because it seems like. Everywhere you go and everything you do revolves around being on your bike. So, like, right. that's so easy to fuck your sneakers up when you're doing that, right? I mean, yeah. Like, when I was younger, I would, like, wear them to school first, like, while they were super fresh. And then yeah. wear them to ride after they, they got beat up a little bit. Um, but then as time went on, it was like, that, that didn't even matter to me, bro. Like, whether they're messed up or not. But you, I mean, but you don't feel like some sort of way of like if you're out like riding or whatever. It's not even the shoes are scuffed, but they're all like sweaty or whatever. You know, they're just even, going bro. someplace. No, not at all, not at all, man. It's just part of who I am now. You know what I mean? That's like, just what it is. I mean, because like, I just remember know. like growing up and skating, you'd always have like your skate shoes and then like your chilling shoes, and you didn't want to like if you're gonna go hang out with people afterwards, you're like I need to take these off. You know? <laughs> I think like early on, that like, that was the mindset. But yeah. as I got older, bro, I was like, nah, I'm wearing these. Like. Whatever I'm comfortable with, you know what I mean? Like, I'll go ride these right now and still. Would you ride those right now? Hell yeah. Wow, oh, I love that. <laughs> Why not? I love that. <laughs> you got the bike right with now. you? Let's do it right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bikes are home today, unfortunately. You man. didn't bring it? Nah, I didn't You didn't bring want it. to take a lap and around the I complex? I wanted to, man, but it was bike. so quick in and out from, like, New York to Long Beach. So I was like, yeah. I'll, I'll leave it at home this time. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then later in life when you were, like, riding in all these, like, rare pairs of footwear, is there mm-hmm. no sneaker that you wouldn't ride in? Or is there some yeah. pairs that you keep, like, nah, near there's DS? No pair, like, there's no pair I'm not, like, riding in. Like, okay. If I feel inclined, I'm going to go throw those on. But I feel like there's certain shoes that probably aren't good for riding. Like, I'm, I imagine, oh, like, definitely. Air, imagine, like, Air Max 95s would yeah, probably suck to, yeah, to ride a bike. <laughs> it was definitely not it. Because, like, for me, I also need, like, the grip. Yeah, on, mm-hmm. on the outsole to hit like the pedal, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So sometimes if, if you got a shoe that doesn't have good grip, and you do like a tail up or something, you're bound to like slip that pedal, and then that shit flies back and cracks your shin. Yikes! And that's just not what you want. <laughs> <laughs> not what you want at all. And then there was like the Nike Dunk era, right? And you were like going to Supreme and buying Dunks, right? Yeah, man. I, I remember the like probably the first time I did that, or I, I was like. Senior prom. Okay. I was like, that was around that era. I remember getting what year um, is this? T19s, all oh, blue joints. So like 2006 or yeah. yeah, probably a little yeah. bit before that, maybe. Yeah. Around it, but around that time, I remember yeah. like the T19s. Did they know who you were in there? Nah, this is before I even like turned pro, bro. Yeah. It's probably right before. Was it, was it, did you get a little attitude going in there? Because that's like the classic Supreme thing that people right. talk about, right? Not, it's not around any, anymore mm. now, but when you would go in there and you look at it, it was definitely kind of, it was definitely intimidating going, going in at, at, at that point, you know what I mean? But. I wanted those T19s. <laughs> T19s are a classic. Definitely. You and bought those recently, right, Joe? Yeah, I bought them actually because we were talking about them before a podcast, and I bought them when we were actually in the office. Uh, yeah, one one episode. And also, you know, you're obviously, we'll get into the design, but you're notorious for wearing Jordan 1s. But yeah. it was because you started in Dunks that the transition from Dunks to Jordan 1s was like seamless. Was Is seamless. that fair? Yep, it was a seamless, man. And, Again, like so, like when I signed to Nike, I signed to Nike 6.0. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was wearing those for years. We we, we got to break down 6.0. Yeah, because yeah, like people of, don't know. I remember who are, yeah. yeah, super into dunks right now, and and they they know about all the SB dunks, but they don't remember that 6.0 yeah. was was right there. Can you yeah, can you talk small. about 6.0 a little bit? For sure. So when, like when I signed to Nike, so I signed to Nike 6.0, and Nike 6.0 was the vertical within Nike that was like. Surfing and snowboarding, action sports, action sports, and like, mm-hmm. across the board. With the logo know? with the two, I don't even two little like aliens. It was, it was there's two little monsters. Yeah, 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 man. They had like wakeboarding and mm. skiing. It was like a tons of athletes from different like action sports. So I signed there first, 
And then as time went on, it kept like refining that like like that program. Mm -hmm. And then um, it found, it phased out, and I was signed underneath the SB label. Mm. That's when I started wearing Dunks a lot. Was it nice to make that switch? Because like at the time, you know, there was like a lot of sneaker purists who were kind of like, oh, 6.0 doesn't really count as SB or whatever. Um, when he uh, says sneaker purist, you know who he's talking about? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I know who he's talking about. <laughs> <but> like, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, just say it. I mean, sneakerheads in general, though, I felt the time. I remember at the time having a pair of 6.0s and being sad because I didn't have the SB. 6.0, you know, like was that, a journey, that was Journeys, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. It, has some, it has some good silhouettes, right? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, and some memorable shoes. The, the Back to the Future one, right, the DeLorean the shoe. Yeah. The Mavericks were super dope. It yeah. was like simple, more like a blazer like mm -hmm. type shoe. So I had I can't a Maverick like, low in high school. That I, I can't like shit on like, on like that time because <laughs> yeah. they, they, they brought me in. Like That was my sure, interest to Nike. So to answer your question... Um, nah, it was like this is the next part yeah. of my journey within the swoosh, you know what I mean? Um, but definitely having like some of like, those really like coveted like dunks were like super dope to have as well and be able to ride in those. Was, was then you got cool. your own dunk too, they stand yeah. on a pedal. Exactly. The, the Somp switch was amazing, you know what I mean? Like, you, like even that process was, was like so cool for me, man. I remember when um, I was designing that shoe and DJ Clark Kent was actually like guiding me through, through that process. Mm -hmm. Like him, him and I drove around the city, went to like Garment District, looking at different materials. Mm -hmm. Went to um, Twenty One Mercer, look at the different materials. Shout out to Izzy, um, Israel Mateo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that Jordan Brand? And who worked, Jordan Brand who worked now. on yep. the shoe that you're wearing right now? Exactly, Izzy is a legend, man. Yes, of course. Um, but even like having that song, man, was was like was was super dope. We did a we did a release party here, a release for it. I'm um, here at um, Dave's Warehouse mm -hmm. in, uh, in New York, mm -hmm. which was super, co which was cool as fuck, man. Was, was that when it was on Baxter? Day. He yeah, was on Baxter. Yeah, yep, right it above was, Canal. Yeah, exactly. Yep. It was cold as hell that day, and people were lined up outside for hours, man. And it was just amazing to like see that. You know, it was amazing. So, you getting your own shoe was that something that they approached you with, or they knew that you wanted to do for a while? Like, like how how did those conversations first start? I mean, it's definitely something you gotta push for. I yeah. feel you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, like so that shoe that we pushed for the Air Force One, I did like they approached me to do it. Yeah. Um, the dunk, I mean, the uh, Jordan we, we push for, but it's, it happens different like, every time, you know what I mean? But once the brand is supporting you, they're behind you, like they put that push and make it happen, you know what I mean? How many pairs do you ask for personally when something like that happens? Because cause it's like, it's it's your shoe, so I would right. think to an extent you could just hook everybody up, but also I, I assume that there's more people in your life that want pairs than you can actually take care of. Bro, we put a shoe out, it's the biggest headache, bro, because there's so <laughs> many Talk people out of us, right? So like, I, I always end up buying Tons of my like tons of pairs of my like my own shoe on mm -hmm. eBay. No, nah, we're like. sponsored. By eBay. <laughs> <laughs> so you the sure correct answer eBay? is actually yeah. I, I buy them from different places, yeah. but <laughs> but nah, just to like bless all the homies, like everyone yeah. along this journey. Like I want to make sure like I take care of them because there's so many people that whether they were like helped me create some content or we had a conversation or a mentor or a family member or the homie back in the hood that like yeah. taught me like how to bunny hop, things mm -hmm. of that nature. It's all those people along my journey. You share a hot tub with sure. them on a Kith press <laughs> trip. Sorry, not a press I trip. Mean, <laughs> Ronnie got mad when I called it a press trip, a Kith trip, sorry. <laughs> what, what percentage of yes to no's though do you feel like you fulfill on like the people hitting you up for the shoe? When the shoe comes out, man, um, I would say around like eighty percent. Like yes, yeah. if like if I have it, I'm gonna give it to mm -hmm. them. You know, like even in some, like, I don't have a fresh pair. Mm -hmm. Like even like my Jordan one, I may have one pair. You know what I mean? But like the rest of them, I give them away. You know, just to support the homies and the people who support me. I think it's very important. You know what I mean? You don't you don't keep a decent number of pairs like I wish in the stash. Did. I wish I did. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't. <laughs> It's just not possible. <laughs> you know right. What I mean? Is there it's one shoe possible. you regret that, like, you you know, you bike through where you're like, oh, man, these are torch and I can't get another pair now? Or um, they're, like, too expensive at this point, you know? Nah. No. Nah. Not at all. This man yeah. is about wearing his shoes. <laughs> yes. <right? laughs> no. You know, for me, too, man, it's, it's, it's also an art thing, right? So, like, when I look at a piece of content, how I approach it, it's like, I want to, I'm paying attention to every moment, element within that content. So, the shoes that I'm wearing is part of, like, that mm -hmm. whole like, expression. So yeah. if I wore a pair of shoes, I wore them for a reason. I was, it was part yeah. of the story I was trying to tell through the content. You know what I mean? And to that point, talk about like Go, which is like how that came about and like when you decided that is like, you could, that like has changed like your career essentially. People mm -hmm. look forward to those videos. They're so well done. Look at the Go chain on right now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let me see the chain. <laughs> see what's going on, man. <laughs> boy, you see what's boy going Greg. on. Is that our boy, Greg? <laughs> Yeah. Of course, it's Greg, man. Yeah, shout, shout out to, to Greg. Always made the chain. Nah, he's exactly. The Go Films, they started in uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. And I was at a point in my career, man, I wanted to create like a very immersive piece of content 
that I can really bring people into like every aspect of my life. Because mm-hmm. what I do, I I don't just ride bikes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like it's a it's a lot of the things that I'm like that I'm into. And we were able to showcase a lot of the things I was into, whether it's like sneakers or like fashion or music or whatever it may be, through the Ghost series. And the first episode, which we shot in New York, really wanted to just like bring people in like into that experience. So mm-hmm. shoot it POV and mm-hmm. see what happens. We really didn't have any plan for it. It was like let's just create it and put it out to the world. And that's what we did. We put it on YouTube with no expectations, and the shit went viral, bro. Yeah, like crazy, man. We had people. And different media outlets from around the world hit me up like, "Can we repost this video?" Mm-hmm. Like people from like France and Australia and just different websites and like news outlets. And that's yeah. when I knew it was something serious. We had like news outlets hitting me up like, "Can we post this content?" Because it's like we love it. And from that point, it's like, okay, cool. Let's take this thing around the world. Yeah. So the first episode in New York starts with me in a park with my nephew, mm-hmm. and by the time we're done with the entire journey around the world, I'll end back in Queens wow. with my nephew in that park and all the videos connect. So that's why we shoot it seamlessly so that when we're done, yeah. you can sit and watch we go around it's the like world continuity seamlessly. between them, yeah. Exactly. Love that. Man, so yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's been a great journey. Does it blow your mind too? Because I feel like what you've been able to do in your career, it's like there was no real like blueprint for the way that you kind of created it. Like obviously there's been pro BMXers who have had their, like Dave Mirror has had like his own shoe yeah. before, but mm-hmm. I, I feel like they didn't really like, you know, kind of encompass like the lifestyle lane that, you know, that you've been able to do and create with everything. So like, you know, right. like. I mean, like I would say Dave Mirror is the closest and God, yeah. like God rest his soul, man. Yeah. Like, Dave, like Dave was so instrumental in my career, you mm-hmm. know, so growing up watching him ride X Games, like, and kill it, watch him on like MTV Cribs and yeah. he had that all go 7, 745 and, mm-hmm. Like, he was that dude, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, I felt like he laid the blueprint in like in a certain sense, mm-hmm. but with what like I did with it, it was a reflection of my upbringing. Gr- mm-hmm. Growing up in Jamaica, Queens, right? Like, seeing like my big brother and his friends like get fresh, pulling up in like dope cars and like really embracing like just hip hop, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Everything that, that that comes along with. And that's, I feel like, was the lens that I looked at my career through. It was like, how can I recreate all the things that inspired me as mm-hmm. a kid? Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why when I speak about like my brother and his friends pulling up in dope cars, like they have like the like the Lexuses and, and like the Maxim with nine fives rimmed up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's that was my first like interaction with like really cool cars and like really got really I got into cars and now working with a brand like Mercedes. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like we're doing a lot, a lot of those things. Like how can I like re- not not recreate, but just again like put my spin on what in, like inspired and influenced me as a kid, and that goes across the board, right? When it comes to sneakers or when it comes to travel or the brands I collaborate with and how we create the content, you know what I mean? It's really just me pulling from the things that I've seen as a kid and now sharing them with the world, like through BMX. You mentioned the Dave Mir. Did you play the Dave Mir PlayStation game? Of course. How, did you guys have that game? <laughs> I, I didn't. That game was incredible. I, I never bought the game, but I only had the demo and like the ragdoll <laughs> physics demos. and the way you could, remember the demo disc? I don't I know if it was like You, had, you only get three disc. stages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you one character. For, like, yeah, exactly. Like, the loan for that game was so incredible. No, nah, that's what I'm saying. So things the like that. The ragdoll physics and the way you could like flip around. Falling the side. Oh my God. But even things like that, man, like Dave like laid such like, like just like the groundwork to show the world that like BMX just isn't like kids in backyards or mm-hmm. kids in like the middle of nowhere like riding their bicycles and like growing out. You know what I mean? Like he showed the business side of it. And for me, I'm, I feel like I'm just continuing and like in that path. Like you can really take bike riding and take what you love to heights that people have never would like would imagine. You know, and also breaking down the stereotypes of like what people think BMX riders are supposed to look like or mm-hmm. supposed to do. You want to smash that completely. You know what I mean? Nigel, being signed to Nike at 18 and then, like, a lot of times it's, like, one and done. But, right. like, th- that deal basically lasted up until the Jordan deal, essentially, mm-hmm. when you, like, switched over. Obviously, it's been so many years. But what's, like, the biggest difference between signing at 18 and then signing now in 2021 with, with Jordan? Big difference in regards to what? Like, my personal experience? Yeah. Or? Yeah, like, how, how, like, the deals just, like, happen. And um, the paycheck. <laughs> I mean, that's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is a lot of it the same? A lot of shoes showing up, or is it like even different? I know it's early mm-hmm. into the Jordan deal, but right. I mean, like, I would say, like, I know a lot more now. Mm-hmm. You know, um, people at the brand are more familiar with who I am yeah. and my brand and like what I bring to the table. 
you know, like signing on at 18, I was a kid, like yeah. eyes wide open, just excited to get free product. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Now we, we sit down and we strategize in regards to like, what does the future at the brand like look like for me? Like, what can we do? How, like, how does the brand fit into everything I'm doing and like vice versa? You know, so I feel like just now, just knowing more, being more seasoned as an athlete, as a business, um, that's like the biggest change for me, you know? It's been over three years since the Jordan 1 collab. I always like, I'm right. interested, what did like early sample iterations look like? You know, you did the scuffed Jordan mm -hmm. on the upper, but right. what did the other sample, I know you work with uh, Frank Cooker, but like- Shout out to Frank, man. Is oh there like God. a lot of samples out there or, or not really? Um, there may be one sample that the colors were like a little bit off, mm -hmm. um, but that was really it. Like we knew from like Jump Street, like that was the one. You know, yeah. we sat down and it was like, cool, like take like this swoosh off of this side, do the lines on it, um, go and put the scuff mark here. And then, um, I mean, like, as you know, like like every pair has like different kind mm -hmm. of scuff marks that are all done by hand. So that was super cool, you know what I mean? But in regards to the sample, there weren't many like iterations of it. Like we yeah. knew from like, we knew the colors, the color scheme from from Jump Street, you know what I mean? That's like maybe the closest thing you've had to a BMX shoe, but it's still a retro basketball shoe, right. like in your lane. <laughs> right. Has there ever been conversations where you're trying to push to make a shoe that's more geared toward BMX from a performance of aspect? Of course, you also, you also have like that conversation. Yeah. It's, just, yeah. it's just tough, you know yeah. I mean? You show you like the inner, inner politics of all these brands, man, mm -hmm. it's tough to like, to like do something like that, but that conversation is always happening. Oh, I'm always pushing to like, how do we, take BMX and like elevate it from every aspect, whether it's the bicycle ride, riding, whether it's content, whether it's the product that's around it, all of it, you know what I mean? But I feel like Jordan, I guess a little bit has not gone in that direction, but you know, they've done like all like the comfort and Zoom Jordan yeah, ones. Technology. Like, is yeah. that, has that been like great for you to see, you know, as far as your riding goes? I mean, like it's been great to see that they like focus on innovation, but for me, like it's a, a good pair of Jordan ones is, is good enough, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I ride those things all the time and exactly what I need like in a shoe, you know? We talked earlier, have you ever like rode in a pair of 85s or 94s or anything like that? Nah, nah. I wonder I how that should, would, though. I wonder how different that would be. You think you they, could even though probably like- probably feel crazy. Yeah. I mean yeah. like at the end of the day, right, just riding and pedaling down the street, you can do that in any shoe. Yeah. When it comes to like high performance, like I'm about to go jump down a rail or grind a ledge that I need a certain like, type of shoe, you know what I mean? Especially like, when like you do a trick and like you have to bail out, right? So mm -hmm. say you're coming down the stair set and you got to throw your bike away and land, like that's when you really, like, that's when like that technology yeah. really comes into play, because you don't like, you don't want it to be in like the wrong shoe that you jump off your bike and you sprain like, you sprain your ankle. Mm -hmm. or, like, that impact just like sends like whatever shock waves through yeah. your body, you know. So what's the worst crash you've ever had? I always get asked this question, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and man, do you remember man. the sneakers you were wearing? <laughs> wow. I don't remember the sneakers I was wearing, yeah. but um, the trauma they, is they, blocking that out, right? But they definitely had to be a pair of six point yeah, because okay. I broke my wrist when I was nineteen, wow. and that was like <sighs> the one injury I always reference because like it was a major injury for me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I like, just turned pro like the year before, and well, less than a year actually, and then breaking my wrist at this point in time where I just signed a Nike. I'm on LRG, like I'm wow. on these different brands. I'm signed to Miracle, so. I'm working with like Dave Mayer personally yeah, yeah. now, you know what I mean? And, and to break your wrist, like it sucked, man. But it was very like important for me to like take that break after turning pro yeah. and set myself up mentally for the rest of, of my career. No pun intended. Right. <laughs> sorry, I had to. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know what too though, right? Like beyond just that, man, there's there are other like just nicks and bruises and sprains that would sit you down for two or three weeks or yeah. not or, like not allow you to be at your like optimal like state of like being. Um, so we would always get those like shinners or mm. sprained shoulder or bruised this, bruised that. Just, like, hearing yeah. Yeah. It's painful just like It's part of the game, bro. Yeah. 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 It's part of the game like any other athlete, you know yeah. what I mean? We see all the time like, oh, this athlete can't play in the game out for two weeks or out for a month. And yeah. those are just like those same type of injuries. It may not be a complete break or some super like gnarly ass crash or something, yeah. but it is an injury that's nagging and you got to sit down and let it heal. Did you inflict the injury on Tony Moy recently? On who? Oh, <laughs> I have to talk about this. He doesn't know. <laughs> what are you talking Former about? Former Complex employee Tony Moy 
who was playing oh, in a champ sports man. football game. <laughs> is he okay? Everybody's like, okay. He was listen, here yesterday. Listen, let me say, he, okay? he was here yesterday. Every, I think he knew you were coming and he left town. But wow. Everybody signed a waiver. So yeah, it's, everyone it's signed a waiver. Listen, Tell that was if, intense. What, what, what Wait, did you blow him up? No, <laughs> no. Was, so listen. What was it? A champ sports <laughs> yes, influencer so, football game? So, yes, it was a, it was a, a East Bay champ he, footlocker. Okay. Footing. Flag, like flag I also football feel game. like... You beat him in softball too, or we? No, he was on my team. We got to talk about the softball game because I have some questions about that too. So, so we're doing this East Bay um, flag football game. There's like there's like three teams. Yeah, friendly game of football. Friendly flag, you know, real real friendly, and. (laughs) We got down to the championship game, and he's yeah. on the opposing team, which yeah. I'm like, damn, bro, we played softball a few months prior, you know, switch teams people. on me. It'd be your own All right, people. cool, no doubt. And the, and listen, like, we're not playing for no money, like, we're just playing to Pride. play because we all love football, yeah. you know. And we got down, like, I think it was like right before the half, <laughs> and it's intense, right? And Tony's team, like, they're driving down, they're, yeah. they're, they'd be maybe up by like ten or something like that. So we're like marching locked down in. the field, yeah. right? And I think they're on like the five yard line. And Tony and like we're all like going for the ball and the ball's coming at Tony and he catches it on like the one yard line. And we're all just so like into the game that we happen to crash into each other. Yeah, you happen. So to. his eye Damn. Like I ran it, like we ran in, into each other. I guess he hurt his eye or something like that. But he caught the ball, came down with it. <laughs> wow. But he on, on the one yard line. Didn't, oh, okay. didn't get the touchdown. Spotted it right before. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like he, clip him at the knees or something when he's <laughs> up in the air. Like, bro, like him, and the I, ball. Yo, him and I just collided, bro. And, and, it was and like, they carted damn. him off the field? He was bleeding, bro. Wow. You get like a helmet to helmet contact? <laughs> basically, like personal foul, targeting? targeting? Yeah, that's goal. basically what happened. Like <laughs> helmet to helmet, bro. And he like, hurt his eye and stuff. So I hope he's okay. He, he's, uh, he's okay now. He perfect. was walking a little like, you know, I don't know if he could walk in a straight line anymore. Right. Because of whatever damage. <laughs> Concussed him. <laughs> yo, he was it at looked, the hospital that yo, day. Yo, it looked so bad too because the blood like ran across this oh, way. Man. So it looked way worse than what it was, <laughs> Game man, of CTE. But it's, so, it's okay though, man. Like my team still won, you know. So we're, <laughs> That's what we're, okay. we're the champions. Okay. Tony's good. Yeah. Everybody wins. Tony's you know in good I mean? health. And then. The the softball game I want to ask about too, if right. we can. This is this is super duper minutia when it comes to our team. Mm-hmm. But one of the one of the person who works with us, Ben Felderstein, mm-hmm. he was on the team and he was confidently saying that he was the best player out there. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> what? No, no, no. I'm not saying it. What, 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 was did, he the did shortstop? anybody stick out to you? No one stuck out to me because we won. Like so, I, I, <laughs> didn't he try to hit it inside the park home run and got you, thrown out that's at home? True, that's actually true. What he happened? Did, he almost hit he, he, inside the true. park home run and he was coming around third and he stuttered and then he tried to go home and got thrown out. Why? What he happened? was on Ferg's team. Was Ferg's team opposite of your team? Opposite of my team. Yeah. Okay. Did, maybe, like, maybe I had like missed that game. <laughs> <laughs> have you? <laughs> have you? Have, have you met up with MJ and talked to him about the whole BMX world? We haven't yet, but that's gonna happen soon, I believe. Do you feel like you're gonna have to, like, you know, kind of like translate things to like. You've been having that conversation over and over in your head, like when you finally meet Michael Jordan, so I'm gonna explain to him like what I do, or I mean, like I I feel at this point, bro, it's like something I naturally do because because of what BMX is, I'm always educating people on what the sport's about and like and how my approach is unique and and other people's approaches as well to give people some context, Mm -hmm. you know. So I feel like that's something that we always have to do is explain like what the world of BMX is in 2021, mm-hmm. you know? But. I think it might have been 2021 or it was 2020, but um, the BBC collab and right. like, working with Pharrell. Talk mm-hmm. about like working with Pharrell. It wasn't the, f- was that wasn't the first time you worked with him. Not at all, man. Yeah. So um, I forgot what year it was, but I think like the first thing we did or one of the first things we did was we mobbed the MTV Red carpet. Oh yeah. For like for the for the awards when it was in Brooklyn, man. We popped out with like fifteen bike riders. Yes, man. I like, remember that. That was crazy, man. Like that was a moment, you yeah. know. Um and he's always been like a mentor to me. Mm-hmm. You know, like if I need advice on certain things or insight on certain things, I could hit him up and that's amazing to have that relationship because he's I would say one of the goats like in this, in this whole culture, you know what I mean? Like in general, bro. Um we were talking about this yesterday too, man, like I remember being a kid and watching like the provider video mm. and watching like a lap dance video mm-hmm. and, and other and other like pieces of content that may have came out and like Pharrell was riding bikes, you know, and like as a kid for me, growing up in Jamaica Queens, like you didn't see much BMX like mm-hmm. in like in that way, like on TV and stuff. Yeah. You know, like the only time you would see it would be like X Games or yeah. if they had like a rerun or something, I mean it came on like super late at nighttime. Yeah. And even then it's it's like what you were talking about earlier of that mold where 
a BMX person can only look a certain exactly. way, or only be from a certain environment. E exactly, man. So, so, so seeing that was like, oh, this is fire. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, some like Pharrell's making stupid dope music, like embracing the BMX culture. Um, that was important to me. It was one of those things that like motivated me to, to keep riding because there were influences around me that were like, you riding BMX? Like, nah, bro. Like that's that's like that's not it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so going back to your question though. Mm -hmm. Um, get an opportunity to do that collaboration um, in a collaboration called Ice Cream to Real Cream. Mm -hmm. And it's a two part collaboration. First part is like Go Ice Cream, mm -hmm. Go being like the Go brand, and then BBC, um, BBC Go was going to come out in mid next year. Um, it was just dope to like have the opportunity, you know what I mean, to see that. You know, we, we all grew up and, and watched what Ice Cream and BBC have done yeah. like in regards to like fashion and, and culture and stuff like that. So. Get an opportunity to like collaborate and do that like meant a lot. And we shot the content back in my old neighborhood, mm. and like went back to like the spots we used to ride at, and that was just dope to see it all like all come together. It felt it felt so real. Like that's the whole project, man. So not your first foray into ice cream, though, right? You do have a signature ice cream at Kith, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you do too, bro. Like. <laughs> just for the record, okay. Raise your hand if you have a signature ice cream at Kith. <laughs> 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 but we, but we both, we, we did have signature ice cream. Yeah, Mikey likes it. Set us up with right. ice cream. Okay. Shout out to Mikey. So, to Mikey. Yeah. All right. Come on. Shout out Wait, to I had that too. <laughs> that kind of, he literally uh, double dipped. Yeah, wow. All right, there Over was no, the market. yeah, Ronnie didn't, didn't put exclusivity in the contract. <laughs> yeah. When, when's the next, I mean, being signed to Jordan Brand, so when's the next Nigel shoe coming out? Because I know there has to be one on the way now. Right, but I'm also... <laughs> A person that likes the element of surprise. Yeah, you know I mean? it's a yeah. gift. We, the element of we surprise can't, is We a can't gift. give too much of, of, of it away, man. You know, social media nowadays, everything you see it so quickly, you mm -hmm. know, so we working. You but I'm assuming that, that like now you're like probably really more focused on like doing actual like product more than just oh, like, yeah. oh, just like this one collaboration. Like it's no, like you're no, probably yeah. planning out like a bigger. No, definitely. Like everything like, we, like that we do now, I want to make sure I have like, a proper rollout and, and give people like a very like real experience, you know what I mean? And, Really bring my ideas out and from every aspect, from the product to the content to the event that we release it at. Just all those different mm -hmm. things, man. Having the opportunity to do that um, excites me. You know. Do you still go shopping for sneakers, Nigel? Or like now that you're, yeah. you know, so affiliated with Jordan Brand, I assume you can get any shoe that you want. Are you still out there Definitely, buying man. stuff regularly? I bought a pair of black cements like a couple weeks ago. Nice. Okay. You know, classic joints. Yeah. You know, I I definitely still enjoy that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like. Going to a spot and copping some kicks or seeing something online and ordering them up, man. Like, you have to, you know. Do they do they give you like the hookup price or they know it's Nigel Sylvester, so they hit you <laughs> with the head crack these days? <laughs> oh, wish, man. Sometimes if I cop something to like resell it, it'll maybe take a little bit off, but you know, you know how this shit works, man. <laughs> hey, everybody got to eat, you know. So the but like immediately when you sign though, you're you're immediately working on things. I mean, yeah, like that conversation's happening, right? We're breaking down, like, what is the plan for the next few years? You know what I mean? Like, and again, like, how can we activate here and mm -hmm. build something out around this? You know how this shit goes, bro. Yeah. It's, it's, all, it's all based around moments, you know? When, so we have those conversations. When you signed, was there like a moment, like, when you went on to campus, like, after signing the deal and there was like a big, like, no, the campus is closed right now. Yeah, okay. that's so, as we know, because. <laughs> I tried to go there a couple weeks ago, and the security wouldn't let me in. So yeah, I can, I can attest firsthand, yeah, exactly, yeah, especially man. for me. But but I, they would let you on campus. They probably would. I'm haven't been up there in a minute. You should have go video on campus. We've been talking about that okay. for a while, man. I like that. that for a while, man. But you know what's cool, man? Like it, it was wild because I was actually um, I was shooting a hyper rice commercial mm -hmm. with my mom recently, and saw that, yeah. and like I got a hyper ice. It's amazing, right? Shout out to Joe Holder. He set me up. Shows that guy. Yeah. But it was wild, man. Cause we're like, we're on set shooting. And like the like DocuSign came over to sign the deal, and I, <laughs> and I signed it while I was shooting like that commercial, man. And I just think moments like that, man, it's so surreal for me, man. I'm, I'm sitting there on set, my mom's inside the Normatech, and I'm signing like deals with Jordan Brown. It's brand, amazing. You know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy, man. I'm just super thankful and like blessed with like what my what, life has. Uh, what was the first thing that you went and bought to like treat yourself after signing that Jordan <laughs> deal? When you knew like you're like, all right. <laughs> You can have to, right? I, like, what, I mean, I didn't buy anything, bro. Like, really? Honestly, I got so much shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> you like trying to get rid of things? <laughs> I'm always giving stuff away, man. The next go is soon, right? Yeah, man. The next go comes out on November 16th. Okay. Yeah, man. We shot it in uh, Las Vegas, Ooh. which is going to be crazy. You know, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. The last time we released the go video was back in 2018. Mm. So it's been like three years now. So people are waiting for it. I'm excited for it. We work super hard on it, man. So 
I can't wait for like to put it out to the world and see just how people feel about it, you know. You said the you know, you love the element of surprise. Any hints on the footwear? Jordan ones. Okay. For sure. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's all I can give you right now, man. Right. So <laughs> definitely pay Jordan ones. Before you, before you came on, we were talking about the whole uh, pre-distress sneaker trend. Right. You know where it's like people take the Air Jordan ones mm -hmm. and you know kind of uh, you know make them look like they're eighty fives. Obviously, your mm -hmm. shoe came pre-distress. What's your mm -hmm. thoughts on that becoming a big trend at this point? Do you feel like you played mm -hmm. any role in that or? Um, definitely. You know, I feel like I feel like putting that shoe out the way we did um, and connecting like the story we did to it. I felt like it let people know that it's okay to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm sure people were distressed in shoes before that, but right. I feel like having a brand like 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 Jordan brand just put the extra stamp on it. You know, um, and I think I think it's needed. I think like that balance is needed. Like having super crispy, clean kicks and then having drinks that come distressed. You know, like why not? So. Since then, there's like this whole wave of you know, I don't know some people like filthy who I've been seeing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you feel like there's a fine line though? Because it's yeah. like, would you like you know, some people or people love what you do, you know, with the Jordan ones, but then people see Golden Goose and they're like, oh, that's whack, you know? <laughs> Golden Goose is whack for the record. Yes, <laughs> I'll say it so nobody else has to. Be. <laughs> I think I, you know, I think it is, man. I think it's all about the story. You yeah. know, I think like the products that like we buy and the things that we love to like purchase and, and embrace and talk about, like the story like, that connects with us. And I feel there's something about that story that connected with people and resonated with people, right? People see me ride in Jordan once for years. But there's a reason behind it, you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, like it's not just story like... explains the reason, you know? So I think that's why people connect with it as well, you know? Do you know Bike Man X? Bike Man X. Yes, I don't like. He loves bikes. That's crazy. Yeah, this, collection. yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Oh, he's yeah. a sneaker collector. Remember this guy from Nike talk back in the day. I was just thinking because he's like one one of the main other people who I can think of who's <laughs> super into bikes and super right. into sneakers. A guy who used to have everything in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know him, this guy? Swiss is also into bikes and shit too. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bikes. But yeah, like I, I know, I know, I know yeah, what you're talking I about. Like he had like entourages back in the day and everything. S super cool homie, bro. Yeah, he's, okay. he's into, into production as well. Okay, a New York guy, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's from uptown. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mike Man X. So shout out. I remember him from Nike Talk. Yeah, so go coming soon. Yes, November 16th. Go Las Vegas. It's going to be a vibe, man. Make sure you guys tune in. Bunch of cameos. Bunch of cameos. Is there a question. kiss in Las Vegas? Not yet. <laughs> oh, is that, is that where the next. Uh... No. Oh. No. <laughs> you spill no. the beans? No, it's not. <laughs> Get a text from okay. Ronnie right now. You guys want the Kiff lowdown really bad, huh? <laughs> you guys want all the inner workings. You want to know what's going on. Wait, so you, you mentioned earlier. <laughs> The, the the obviously like your Mercedes dealer or whatever. So that right. means you can't ride in the Kith BMW, or is that not allowed? <laughs> is that not allowed? If Roddy wants to come pick you up and give you a quick uh, ride, you can. It just won't be on social. Right. Tell Roddy Greg needs to come pick me up in the in the, yeah. in, in the Kith BMW and take me for a spin, man. Yeah. <laughs> um. So go November sixteenth. Right. And yeah, we'll be on the lookout. Definitely be on the lookout, man. You know how it's gonna happen, bro. It's gonna be open your phone one day and mm -hmm. be like, oh shit, here yeah. it goes again. You Break know the internet. I mean? It's gonna be a vibe, right? So we're ready. It's coming soon. Can't thank you enough for joining us. No, thank and, you. And uh, it's it's funny that we're we're all based in New York, but we got this done in Long Beach. <laughs> Sometimes that's how it happens. For but real. yeah, man, thank you so much for taking the time. We hope you enjoy uh, day two of Complex Con. No, thank you, man. Likewise, bro. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah. it, nice Angel. Sweet. This has been the Complex Sneakers Podcast. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we will see you guys next week.